Hello everyone, Badger here, and today we're gonna take a look at some SAMs and air defenses in the Viggen. These are air defenses that, what I feel, how dangerous they basically are for you if you are flying the Viggen. It's completely different for each aircraft because you have different sort of ways to fly them. The Viggen is a very low altitude aircraft, so long range defenses are not really as much of a problem unless you're caught unaware, which you shouldn't be. Uh, but then, the sh closer you get, the more dangerous it is. And we fly extremely low. So, I usually divide air defenses into short range and long range. And what I mean with short range is, if these will hit you when you do a strafing run, a bombing run, or if you overfly the mission area. Long range SAMs are the stationary SAMs that have big radars. And also the more mobile ones. The Tor is a good example of one that has been a big enemy. So I'll take a look about them and uh, I'll give them kind of a rating at the end of this on what I feel about them. Because some of these SAMs are more dangerous than others. So let's get started. We'll start with the SA-10 Grumble, also known as the S-300. Next in is the SA-11 Gadfly, also known as the Buck. His older brother, the SA-6 Gainful, also known as the Cub. The SA-8 Gecko, also known as the Osa. The SA-15 Gauntlet, also known as Tor. And last but not least, the SA-19 Grissom, also known as the Tunguska. Then on the short range side of things, we have the SA-13 Gopher, also known as Strela-10. His older brother, the SA-8 Gaskin, also known as Strela-1. Triple A gun, Su 23 4 Shilka. And his low tech brother, the Su 23. And last but not least, we have the SA 18 Grouse, also known as the Igla. So let's get into the details and take a closer look. So here we have the SA-10, also known as the S-300. We start from the front left and we have what I call the waffle. It's the first search radar. In the middle we have what I call the matchbox, which is the track radar. Destroy this and the entire system is as harmless as a puppy. And then finally on the right we have what I call the banana, which is another search radar. If there's one radio you want to destroy, it's one of the big pole ones. If you can't make the difference, just fire on either of them. Hopefully you get the right one. Command center in the middle and launchers on the side. And this missile system has a huge range. But it's not that big of a problem because we fly so low in the Viggen that, as you can see here, the only way it can get you is that if it catches you without a nails. I think I was in the blind spot for the radar warning receiver and I don't get a warning until now. And it's fire on me. And these travel at like, you know, Mach 4, 4,000 plus kilometers an hour when they're coming to you. But still, that gives you a lot of time to get down and break radar line of sight. So these guys really aren't that much of a threat unless they, I don't know, disrespect any SAM and they'll get you. You know, like, don't pay attention to where they are, don't see them. These things will just fly right into you. But break line of sight and it just self-destructs. And we're safe. So next up we have the SA-11. And just like the SA-10, the SA-11 Buck is a long range SAM, though nowhere near as long, but it still has good, got good distance. Like I said in the Viggen, we fly very low and that affects uh, the Air resistance, of course. There's a lot more air to be pushed around when you're flying low, so the missile range is pretty short once the engine burns out. 
and this engine burns out pretty quickly so they can be very hard to keep track of and eventually you just get hit and when these hit just like with the SA-10 you just die uh, because the explosive charge is massive other than that standard procedure just as the SA-10 when you get a launch warning just dive down break line of sight or alternatively use some chaff as usual you can just notch the radar and drop a bunch of chaff so here are some demonstrations and here the missile is pretty much defeated it still had a long way to go but it has happened a few times when I'm flying like this and BAM I just get hit in the face because I no longer have visual on the missile itself Alright, and next up we have the SA-8 Gecko, also known as the OSA. Uh, this is really a poor man's air defense system. It's old, it's kind of from the days of the Viggen, so it's a very fitting Sam. But this one is, first of all, short range. It takes ages, I think it takes something like 28 seconds to lock onto its target. And even then the missiles are terrible. When they hit, though, they do a little bit of damage. They don't outright destroy you, but they can kill you, and, you know, a hit is a hit. Usually it destroys the engine or something else. Uh, but yeah, not something that I would really fear if I knew there were SA-8s, but you should still respect them. Because they take so long to lock on, you don't really ever know where the... How should I say it? You don't know what that is. So I'll demonstrate. There are two ways to deal with this. First of all, you can just do a kind of split S or just go low. This missile does not know where the ground is, so it will literally try to lead you and collide with the ground. The second thing you can do is just fly in a spiral right at it, like this. The missile have to keep turning because it's calculating a lead, it's losing speed and Eventually it's just there. Now of course, in a situation like this, you probably don't want to be flying like this, but I was pretty sure I was not going to hit. And then here we have the SA-15. Now this is probably the biggest pain in the ass for us vegan pilots. This thing is lethal. It has about 15 kilometers range, which isn't that much, thankfully. But the missile is fast, it's very agile, it has a really high probability of kill. The same techniques apply though, if you want to dodge one of these, then you have to break radar contact. In an emergency, you can fly towards it. But it has 8 missiles and it will keep shooting, so once you pass over it, uh, he's most likely going to get you. So, as usual, you can do a spiral, you can notch him with chaff, or you can break line of sight. Which is, of course, a problem if you are in flat terrain. In all of these videos, I will be showing as if I didn't have any countermeasures. So there we saw the launch. Now we just have to quickly get down low. And this thing knows where the ground is, so it's not fooled by that. It will still hit mountain sides if you die behind a mountain. And there we have defeated it. But this is a very good SAM system. Probably one of the best in DCS. The biggest threat to us of all. And they can even shoot down your missiles. So you cannot take them out from long range unless you spam it. Now there is one system that is almost worse than the SA-15. And it is the Tunguska. Now this thing is pretty rare on most multiplayer servers. Because it is so powerful. But it has four... 30mm autocannons and 8 really high speed missiles. It has less range than the Tor, but these missiles are not only smokeless, it doesn't give you a warning because they are basically optically guided, like laser guided. It does not use the radar to guide in the missile, so it doesn't give you any warning other than its search radar tone. And like I said, it's smokeless, so even if you got a warning, you would have no idea where it is. 
a very deadly system that you do not want to run into. And like the SA-15, it can also shoot down your missiles with both cannons and with its own missiles. So we have us Tunguska over in that field right there. Now I have God mode on, but let me know when you see it firing. Because I can guarantee you would not see that in the real world, so to speak. There it is. And there it flew by. First one misses actually. Somehow, but the following ones actually hit me. First hit, and I would be hit, and pretty much dead. And then I just fly close to demonstrate the AAA. Which isn't that great. If it hits you, it does a lot of damage. 30mm is huge. But it has to hit you first. And so now we're coming up on the small air defenses, as I like to call them. And this is the SA-13 or the Strela-10. And this is an infrared guided missile system that is very quick to deploy. It does not need to get a lock on but it does use radar i think it uses the radar for ranging and for a better firing solution but you might not get a warning sometimes and i'm not sure if this is a glitch or not but as you'll see it will be very confusing when you fly by one of these because they have very short range five kilometers roughly if i remember right so here i'm looking i saw i got a spike from my side and bam, there's a smoke trail. By now I would actually be dead if that missile wouldn't have failed. So I got time to react, pulling, and that one almost hit me. So this is the most dangerous thing you can encounter. But, if you stay far away enough, you're gonna make it. So if you get close to these guys, they usually have very good accuracy, very high probability of kill. Unless you have flares as a countermeasure, they will almost always get you. So don't try anything with them. And so here is his little brother, the SA-9. It is a smaller, older version of it. It has a different carrier, of course, but this thing cannot actually aim low enough to hit me in the trial run. So it doesn't even shoot, it just tracks, if even that. And in my experimentation, I had to fly on with the full afterburner the entire time, in a circle, until I eventually got it to fire, so... I do not even consider this thing a threat. And when it fires, I mean, look at this tracking. It is terrible, that's really far off. And this one even quits tracking as soon as it loses the rear aspect. He just quits. So, if you get uh, hunted by one of these, don't worry. The only problem is he does not give a launch warning, because this is an infrared or optically guided missile system. So he could still catch you by surprise, but... I wouldn't worry too much about it. It took him ages to get a target solution on me. And here we have a nasty piece of work. This is the SA-18 Igla. It is a man-pad, man-portable air defense system. It basically is a guy with a air-to-air -air rock and SAM launcher on his shoulder. And they're incredibly hard to detect anywhere. Like, good luck finding these in a forest or in a field fire a very quick missile, and the range is so short that if you get within it, you're gonna be hit. You know, these guys, they're weak, but they hit you and it's over. So here we are flying, imagine we're just flying straight, we're not, we're gonna look to the left, but imagine if you're just transiting here, and then there's an igla in that town. Well, imagine your shock if you're just flying around, do -do 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 -do, and then whoosh comes the missile like that it missed me this time but they very often hit you sometimes they completely miss you even though you're flying straight so i'm not sure how the tracking works but a very lethal piece of work and here we have the su-23-4 also known as the shilka it is a four barrel triple a gun that these things really aren't that much of a threat to us uh, they are short range, they give a very clear tone. They can still get you if you are cocky, like with anything. 
If you disrespect this thing, it might just creep up and get you, just like that. And uh, that's gonna end badly for you. So as we see in the sample, uh, I will fly in a circle around and it won't even get a hit on me. Sometimes these things will even miss you when you are just accelerating. So this is more of a threat to something like an A-10 or a helicopter, of course. But I have been shot down by these a few times when I have been careless. You know, you're flying low, you're circling, and then you get a lucky hit. They can either insta-kill you or just destroy something and you can make it back home. It is really random what kind of damage they do. And the spike signal is very noticeable. And you can see the tracers. Problem is, if he is directly below you, you won't get any radar warning receiver and this guy could wreck you. And then last, but also the very least, the SU-23. Same weapon as on the Shilka, but completely unguided. No radar, just optical sights, maybe some lasers, I don't know. But these things, you don't see them ever, the range is pitiful. They can shoot you down if you're careless, but I'd say it still takes uh, quite a bit of effort on their part to actually down you, and some luck. So, I'm literally flying in a circle around them. As you can see, none of them are hitting until they eventually get me. But that's because I stayed in the combat area and I lost all my speed. But it takes a long time for them. A lot of effort on their part to do anything to me. So yeah, I hope that in the end, when we have concluded this, that I have taught you something, that you have learned not to fear the air defenses in DCS. I used to fear them when I saw something, I would fucking... my heart would race. So know that these aren't as dangerous as they may seem initially, but always respect them. If as soon as you don't respect these, they will shoot you down, you know? Like, have patience, always go around. If you see something shooting, dive down, take cover, fly back a bit, fly at it, take another pass. Don't try to go instantly back into the action, because you're only closer to him. Uh, this video took a little while to make, but I it was fun, and I think this will be very useful to many that have fear of Sans. So, really many thanks for you to watching, for those of you watching my video, I really appreciate it if you watched it to the end. So, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you around next time. Badjo out.